All right, guys, we're getting really close to being able to export our movie. We're getting close to having a final product. We really need now to add a title and some credits to it. And to do that, there's uh, some tools in DaVinci Resolve that make it a, make it pretty easy. And then there's some that are really powerful that are a little bit more complicated. And I'll kind of talk a little bit about both of those. But one of the things that they use here is called Fusion. And Fusion does... Um, a lot of, of animation and adds different effects and it can get pretty complicated. I'm not going to go too much into that except for to talk about the canned titles that they have. And then you can also just do some simple animation using the inspector up here in the top right. We haven't talked much about that, but the inspector allows you to do some basic animation of, of text or images and things like that. And I'll talk real quickly about the, the fusion title. So first, if we go to, we're, we've been working up here in the media pool. If we go to effects library, it'll switch this out for us and we can see that there's a toolbox there's some transitions that you can use and all kinds of stuff the titles section here has just regular titles and this will allow you to just put some text on the screen and then you can do your own animation or you can use the fusion titles and I'm just going to show a couple of these there's a bunch of them and you can play with them and see what they all do but there's one that I like um, something about horizontal I think it's called title horizontal Maybe it is this one, horizontal slide. So if I drag that in, I can just drag that right over the top of my existing video here and it'll add a track for me. And I'm just gonna put it at the beginning. And if we just play this, it's got some sample text in it. Now this does, the performance will get a little out of control here if you don't do some, some, some memory caching. So you want to turn on fusion memory cache and make sure that you've got your proxy mode set to quarter resolution or whatever if you have performance problems. But if I play this, you'll see that it kind of slides in from both sides. You've got like a main title and a lower title. And you can go and change that text. If we go over here to the fusion tab, you can it takes just a second and you can see that we've got the the playhead on the fusion tab here. So or on the on the fusion title that we just added and this is where fusion stuff happens now a lot of like I said a lot of crazy stuff happens in here and you can do some really cool things but the the main thing we want to do is just click over here on the horizontal slide and then you'll see on the right side that it gives us the option for editing the text it's got the top text controls and lower text controls and what I was gonna do is just say something like the and then painting and let's just see what that ends up looking like so we just change the text if we go back over to edit and watch this again you can see that it slides in with the painting and we might want to flip that to make one of them larger and one of them smaller I'll play with it a little bit but I just wanted to show that there's some basic pre-canned titles that you can use all right so I just did a quick edit to the fusion title that we were using and I just changed the text on the the lower text control to have a different type or different uh, font the monotype corsiva and I made the the lower text size a little larger and it just it works a little bit better it's not a big deal and I didn't spend a lot of time I just wanted to show that you can make changes to even the canned title sequences so now it comes in it looks a little bit better I'd probably raise up the the whole thing to center it a little bit more but you can play with those and, and add whatever title you want but I also wanted to show that if we wanted we could add our own text and we could animate it ourselves now again there's a lot that you can do with this whoops I just did the delete thing and you can see that I accidentally collapsed my timeline I just want to get rid of that one clip there's a lot you can do with this this tool like I said before and there's all kinds of powerful things that, that will allow you to do animations and lighting and um, you can do lighting on your text and shadowing and whatever and there's a lot of tutorials out there that I would that would encourage you to go watch if you're into that I'm just gonna take a basic text box now and drag it down and I'm gonna put it on the same place we had our other title and you can see that immediately we just get this title on the screen so if I click on this in the top right in our inspector you're gonna see that we can edit the text here and we'll just do this the painting whoops gotta spell it right all right and I'm gonna leave the font I'm not gonna worry about that right now um, we'll make the color a little different let's just make it black yeah I guess whites as good as any for now <laughs> so we'll keep it white and I just want to show that it's possible for you to do the animation of this yourself. Now, again, you can use Fusion and there's a lot more powerful tools in there. But if you want to just do the animation right here in the inspector, we can just go to the very end of this 
And let's say we just want the text to, to come in from the right side and just kind of zoom into the screen like it did with the others. You know how they zoomed in from both sides in the title we just had. If we scroll down to position and we go to where we want the final position to be, so that's at the end of our clip here, and we go to our final position and we click one of these keyframes, we're gonna click the keyframe for position. And when I do that, that, that's this little diamond here. It turns red and now we've added a keyframe there. So I can actually just drag this and I'll just drag it over to the right and I'll drag it all the way off so that, oh, I'm sorry, we're doing the final position. So in this case, I'm gonna put it back in the center where I want it, right there. Okay, so we've added a keyframe, we can leave it in the center and I didn't need to mess with that at all if I didn't want to. What I meant to do was go back to the beginning now where I want the text to start moving from and you can see there's no keyframe here. However, it does show this little arrow that shows the next keyframe. That means that it knows we have a keyframe. And since we only have one, it wouldn't do anything interesting because the, the position would be the same as it was before. But if we just start dragging this and we drag it to the right, you can see that that keyframe automatically got enabled for us because it knows that we're making a change. So I'm gonna drag this off the screen to where it kind of is just off. All right, now we've got a keyframe here and we've got a keyframe at the end. If you click this little, uh, this icon right here, you'll see that this is the curves table. And if you click this, it'll show the keyframes. We have one at the very beginning and one at the very end. I don't want to confuse things with this, but this is the, a place where you can do some additional editing and tweaking with your keyframes. You can just see that we have one at the beginning and one at the end. That's what these little diamonds are down here. So if I play this now, it'll just bring my text in from the right to the left. Now it might be a little slow for us, so we might want to make that happen quicker. And you can imagine that all you would really need to do is have your keyframe earlier and it would zoom in quicker and then it would stay there for a while you could have it zoom back out you can put keyframes on zooming which is this right here so if we do this you can see we go in and out that makes the text larger or smaller so you could have it zoom in and then get bigger it can rotate you can keyframe the rotation so this is something you can use to just make the thing spin in if you wanted to do like a batman style title and you can play with all this stuff you can actually even adjust colors and do all that all that stuff right here in the inspector and then you can go into the fusion tab again and make even more complicated and fancy titles or use the canned ones like we showed before but anyway i just wanted to show that there's a lot of power within the tool and if you just kind of play with this you'll get an idea of what's possible for you to do again you could add additional videos you see or additional tracks video tracks and more titles so you could have a second title and that one could come in from the other side and you can animate them separately and do all kinds of stuff have the fonts be different so anyway just wanted to show that i probably went a little overboard there but hopefully it shows you what is possible All right, so the last thing we need to do to cap it all off is add some credits. And I'm just gonna talk about a very simple way to do it. You guys have seen movies with amazing credits and the credits are sometimes are the coolest parts. Um, and I love watching like how people do different credit sequences. There are a lot of great tutorials out there that show that make it entirely doable. That's they're accessible tutorials that will allow you to do some pretty cool credits, and they aren't as hard as you would think they are. A lot of times, what people will do is open a new DaVinci Resolve project and do the credits in a separate project because they can get pretty complicated in themselves. And to just increase performance, what you would do is have a separate project. You do your credits, and they might have sound and whatever there, and then you would export that and bring it in as a clip to your main movie. Um, again, I'll leave that to you. Go investigate and find some amazing stuff but if you just want to get some really basic simple things on the screen you just go kind of the end of your project and let's say we just want to give a little bit of black space there and then we'll start our credits and all I'm going to do is a very simple scroll so we're just going to say scroll I'm going to put it up here on our title track and this is from the top left it's the same as the text box except for it will scroll and so if we just say direct director Dan Frank, actors, Kate, Dan, thanks for watching. All right, so that's our that's our credits. You can put as much stuff in here as you want. If we play this now, you'll see that it's just going to, oops, it's just gonna scroll from the bottom to the top. It's gonna put exactly the text we had. Now we can get a little fancier. We can center it to make it look more like traditional credits. So now it'll scroll up. One thing you can't do in here is you can't change the individual lines um, fonts. And that is 
a little unfortunate because you might want to have you know this font be smaller and then these the the names be bigger or whatever to do that you'll have to go do some investigation and there's like i said a lot of stuff you can do within the tool um in in different tricks but i just wanted to show a simple way to get credits on the screen to wrap up our movie so next we'll talk about how we export and wrap everything up All right, I just realized that I forgot to talk about transitions, and transitions are extremely important for your movie. You don't want jarring transitions that just go like one scene directly into the next like we have here at the beginning. So if we go and take a look, we have this one, and it just like switches, bam, over to the next scene. And I can pull this down a little bit so we can see better. What we want is a, a nice transition between those, and we can do a bunch of different things. We can have dissolves, which will dissolve one scene out and the other one in behind it, kind of interlacing them. We can have a wipe where it wipes one of them into the next one, and you guys are familiar probably with all the different types of transitions you've seen in movies. A lot of times you don't even notice them if they're done correctly. Um, but there's a couple of things that we have to keep in mind. So while we're up here, we're in the effects library, video transitions, we're gonna work with some dissolves just to kind of show an example. and. What we want to do is we want to cross dissolve between these two, but when we click on this, you can see that they both show red on either side. If I click right on that boundary, and that's because there's not enough overlapping footage to do any sort of a dissolve here. And what we're going to do is we're going to allow it to just create some footage for us. It's going to overlap them for us, but we're going to lose some film because of that. We're going to lose however many frames we decide we want to, to, to transition between. So we wanna make sure that we have our layers locked correctly. So I'm gonna lock anything that I don't want to move. Now we have down here at the very bottom, I've got the, the voiceover. I want that unlocked because that does need to move and stay stay lined up. Uh, my mono track, which is something I use for the crickets, that does need to move as well because we want anything that's lined up downstream to remain lined up. And we've got both of our sound effect layers should be unlocked and so should this one. The only one I'm gonna leave locked is our ambient layers so that they, I don't really want them to split and move. Okay, so we don't have any audio right at this point that's gonna get messed up, so that's good. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to, we don't actually have to have the cursor over there, the, uh, the playhead over this, but we're gonna right click and we're gonna say add 12 frame cross dissolve. Now, the, the it's adding a cross dissolve because the cross dissolve right now, you can see the little red mark, that is our standard transition we could change it to a blur dissolve and make that our standard transition and this would then say add 12 frame cost cross fade which is what the, the blur apparently is called when you do that but if i do this cross dissolve it'll say add 12 frame cross dissolve so i'm going to go ahead and do that but it's going to tell me that i don't have enough handles which basically is a technical term that i couldn't explain well for the overlap between the clips i'm just going to tell it i want to trim the clips to do that and you can see why we wanted to lock our layers because we just lost a little bit it shortened our timeline a tad and in fact it shortened our title as well we should have locked that so i'm going to control z that so that it won't shorten our title i will lock the title and we'll do that again add the 12 frame cross dissolve We'll have to answer the question again. We want to trim the clips. So it does that for us. And then you can see it ends up adding this, this little overlay here, this cross dissolve. And when we look at it, you can see that what we're doing effectively is just fading out of one and the other one is coming in behind it. All right, so if we wanted, we don't always have to have a cross dissolve. It doesn't have to have one coming in behind. We could just fade to black and then fade back out. There's a simple way to do that. If we wanted to go and do that between these two clips, I can select this clip the first one. Um, actually, let's deselect some stuff here so I don't have too many selected. I'm going to select this first clip and then at the very end when it turns to that cursor, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add a six frame cross dissolve because I want six frames on either side. And then I'm going to select the second clip and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a six frame cross dissolve at this boundary. And you can see that now there's two different dissolves because we're going to fade into black and then back out. So if we slowly watch this, you'll see it fades into black and then it fades back out. Now there's lots of other dissolves and lots of other just types of transitions you can play with, but I just wanted to show that it's important to do that and it's relatively easy. If you have problems doing the overlaid dissolves where it's cross dissolving or the overlaid transitions where it's 
transitioning between two clips and it needs to shorten them and you start getting things mixed up your your timeline gets all your audio gets unsynced or any of that then think about just doing these fade to black you know you can fade out or you can have one wipe out and then one wipe back in any one that you apply only to one side or the other you're not going to have to worry about the 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 insufficient handles problem so that'll make it simpler but play with the transitions and make sure you get some transitions in there between your scenes because those help a lot okay one more thing i wanted to talk about before we wrap up i, I just realized that i didn't talk about the possibilities of of animating or um, adjusting sound within the within the the movie except that you can just adjust the sound by dragging this white bar. So I'm going to, I'm going to take our ambient one track here and I'm going to unlock it. And we have this, this, the white line here and we can adjust the sound level by pulling it up and down. If I want this to fade out as I go into my, into my credits, or if I wanted it to fade in or any of those things, what I can do a couple of things here. First off, I'm going to, this is, this is too long. I left it in place because I wasn't how, sure how long the movie was going to be, but I know that I don't want it to be that long. So I'm going to, go out here to the credits, go a little bit into the credits here, and I'll take this and I'll cut this. And then I'm just gonna get rid of the rest of it just because it's not necessary. Now I've got my sound happening and it, I don't know if you guys can hear, I've tried to adjust the volume actually here on the computer because I know I've been, I've been talking a lot about the things that are happening on the computer, but I had the volume down a little bit so it wouldn't be overwhelming to you guys. So I don't know how much you've been able to hear of the, of the in movie sounds, hopefully enough, but, Anyway, um, now you can kind of hear if I play. You can hear that we have the, the city sound still playing there. What we might want to do is just have those kind of slowly fade out. So we could do some animation of the sound and we could use this. We can go to the inspector and we could add keyframes and have the sound animate from one point to the next. And that's useful and it would it would be a good idea. We could We could do it that way. A very simple way to do it though is to take this little white Thing up here and drag it over from the left and what you can see happening is basically this is adding a keyframe it's a, it's a little bit different this is automatically it, it, it's it's a part of the sound as opposed to keyframing and and doing the animation that way but if i take a look now in friction you can see that it's actually slowly getting softer and then eventually it goes down to nothing Right. So that was a very simple way to do that. I just drug it out and said, I want from this point, I want it to start fading out and fade out till the end. And so that worked out just about right. Again, we could add, we could go and look at our keyframes. Let's see. Yeah, there's, there's no keyframes in here. I think it's, it's a separate piece, but anyway, that's a very simple way to do it. We could also, if we wanted to just play with this, I'm going to go to the beginning here and I'm going to say, let's add in the inspector up here. I'm going to drag this down so you can see it. And we select this clip or this uh, this audio. If we said clip volume, we could put a keyframe here, and we could put the clip volume all the way down to nothing. And then we could go over here, and we could put another keyframe, and we could have the volume come up to zero. And you can see now down, or actually, we'll come up to negative forty-eight or whatever it is. You can see here it's coming from zero up. So that's animating it in. The anxiety of the human race in the face of an increasing dependence. No, I should mute. Let's mute the voiceover track. Sorry. Okay. And I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's very soft, but it ramps up the, the audio from here to here, right? And then this will still affect this, this, the original way we did it will still have the same effect. It will ramp it down and fade it out. So those are just two different ways you can go about adjusting the audio. But I just wanted to show that you can do that. It's really cool. You can actually have it kind of audio duck in and out while you're doing things. So if you wanted to have, you know, music or audio that you was playing over a long period of time, and then you wanted to duck it, um, ducking it just means to, to, to soften it or lower the level as other things come in on top of it. So let's say you had some voiceover coming in on top of it. You could just add a keyframe that would have it go fade down and then have it go for a certain amount of time at that, that volume and then keyframe it again to where it starts moving up. And you could just kind of manually bring all those volume levels down instead of constantly splitting clips up all the time and, and, adjusting the volume because you really want the volumes to smoothly go up and down so anyway just wanted to show that again i know this may be overkill here at the end but i want to show some of the things that are possible
All right, guys, so you've got your movie done and you're ready to show it to the world, but you need to do one more step before we can do that, which is export it into a format that they can actually see because you're not going to want people to have to open up Resolve to watch your movie. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Deliver tab here in the bottom right, and you'll see that we default here to the custom settings up here. There's multiple settings. Um, the custom setting allows you a little more control, so we can put in our file name. We'll call it The Painting and I'll call it export one. A lot of times I'll name them different exports because I'll have multiple versions that I want to be able to see the difference between them. But I'll just browse to show you that I'm putting this in my editing tutorial folder, resolve exports, and we'll have it saved there. And for the video settings, we're going to choose MP4. That's usually what I choose. Uh, YouTube will accept QuickTime or MP4, and I usually just default to MP4. The resolution will leave at 1920 by 1080. Even though we'll be submitting for this particular film festival in 720p, you usually want to export at your native resolution because YouTube will take care of um, dealing with the the downgrading, and you want to have your native resolution file so we can we can always we can always go down in resolution, but we can't come back up. And the frame rate and all that I would just leave as is. The rest of these settings I would leave as is. In fact, if you don't want to do this, you can go to the YouTube setting. And what this does is just gives you a simpler set of options, and it's only the things that really matter for exporting to YouTube. So again, I would select MP4. You can leave it at QuickTime if you want, and the codec leave the same. All that stuff is the same. The only other thing you can do here that you can't do on this, the custom tab is you can upload directly to YouTube if you want. So you could say description and all this stuff. If you don't do this, it's really just like a set of quick settings, uh, a, a, yeah, just like a shortcut to get some settings in place. And if you don't upload directly to YouTube, it's just going to end up putting the video on your computer. That's what I do anyway, because I really want to be able to look at it, watch it, make sure it's everything I wanted it to be. And then I use the YouTube interface, <coughs> excuse me, to do the actual final upload. So here's how you get the export. Once we do that, we just say add to render queue. And you'll say, it's, I have a file with the same name because I've done this before to test it, but I'm just going to replace it and you'll see it pops it in the render queue. Now it won't start doing anything until you hit start render. So you could have multiple things ready and then when you go to bed, you could hit start render and it would do all that stuff at night. But if we go ahead and say start render, this will start working and it takes a second sometimes, but it'll start working, it'll have your percentage. This will take different amount of time depending on how long your video is. It shows it's gonna take us about a minute and 30 seconds. It's a, gonna be somewhere around the time the, the length of your movie is how long it'll take to export, something like that. So anyway, that's how you export the movie and get it ready to show to the rest of the world.